In this video, I'm going to show you my top five favorite lighting automations that I use in my smart home. I'm going to show you the tips and tricks that I learned when creating these so you can do the same in your home. Let's take a look. Hey home automation guy, start the show. Most people start their journey into home automation with a few smart lights and maybe a Google Home or Amazon Echo to control them with. It's usually very easy to get these things to talk to each other, so you can turn your lights on and off from your smartphone or using your voice with the voice assistant. However, I'd argue that this isn't really home automation. It's just using a different switch to turn on and off your lights, usually one much more cumbersome and slow than using the light switch that's already on your wall. Luckily, the Google Home, Amazon Echo, and other home automation providers out there now let you create routines, which you can use to turn on and off your lights based on a series of conditions. I personally use Home Assistant for my automations, which allows me to control lights from many different manufacturers, including Philips Hue, TP-Link, and Ikea, using a variety of different smart devices and sensors that I have around my house. Even though I use Home Assistant for my automations, the concepts and tricks that I'm going to show you in this video should be the same no matter what platform you use. The first of my top five lighting automations is the one that slowly fades in the lights as the sun is setting. Because I live in London, this is way more useful to me in winter when the sun sets at 4pm than at summer when the sun sets at 10pm. This automation is triggered in Home Assistant using the sun entity, and I have mine set to trigger 25 minutes before the sun actually sets. I then use this condition to make sure that this automation is only triggered when at least one of the residents in my house is home, because there's no point turning on the lights when nobody's here. My partner and I both have the Home Assistant mobile application installed on our mobile phones, and I use this to determine whether or not we're home or away. I've added both of these device trackers into a Home Assistant group, which has a state of home if at least one of us is home, or not home if all of us are away. You can add as many people as you want to this group and it will behave the same way. The action for this automation calls the light.turnon service and turns on the living room lights to 100% brightness over the course of 1500 seconds, which is 25 minutes. Thanks to the offset on my trigger and the 25 minute transition, the lights will fade in to 100% as the sunlight slowly fades away. The second of my top five lighting automations is the one that automatically turns on the lights when one of us comes home to an empty house at night. I use the same residence group as before, but in this automation, I use it to trigger the lights when at least one person comes home after everyone has been away. Home, in this case, can be set in the configuration page of Home Assistant in the general settings page. The device tracker will change from home to not home when your phone's GPS has registered you being outside of this area and will switch back to home when you go back inside this region. I added a condition here to make sure it only turns on the lights after sunset as I don't need it to turn on the lights when we come home in the middle of the day. In the action section, I use the light.turnon service to turn on the living room lights and some of the lights by the front door to 100% with a five second transition. This is another one of those magical automations that happens without me having to do anything. If we've gone for a walk after dark and we walk back down our street, it's nice to see the living room lights fade in through the window as we walk up to the house. I then open the door and everything is lit up without me having to fumble for a light switch. I've also created this automation in reverse in order to turn off all the lights if we leave the house empty. I use the same trigger as before, but backwards, when the residence group changes from home to not home. But I only wanted to do this if we've been away for more than two minutes. I don't want the lights to turn off if we've just stepped outside to take the bins out or if the GPSs have a wobbly and believes that I'm somewhere that I'm not. I also want this to turn off all the lights in the house no matter where they are. This can be achieved using the light.turnoff surface and setting the entity to all, which will turn off all the lights in the house. The third of my top five lighting automations are the motion activated lights that I have around my house. Motion activated lights was something I struggled to get right. I had aspirations of automatically turning the lights on in my office or living room as I walked in and then turning them off again as I left the room. Unfortunately, I spent a lot of time in these rooms sitting still at a computer or watching TV, which meant the lights turned off while I was still in the room. I now believe that the best place to use motion activated lights are places you don't spend a lot of time in, such as stairwells, hallways, or closets. It may take some experimentation to get the perfect experience for your house. You'll need to play with variables such as the direction the motion sensors are pointing, the brightness of the lights, the transition times, and how long you want them to stay on for after motion has stopped being detected before they automatically turn off. I use motion activated lights in two places in my house. 
Firstly, I have some LED light strips mounted underneath my bed that are automatically turned on when I step out of bed to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. This helps me navigate my way around the bedroom without bumping into anything and not waking anyone else up in the room. I also use motion sensors to turn on LED light strips mounted along the side of my stairs so I can walk up and down them at night without tripping up. These light strips create a really nice ambient light that isn't too harsh, which automatically fades in and out as I walk up and down the stairs. To get this to work properly, I had to place motion sensors at both the top and bottom of all of the stairs. That way they turned on no matter which direction I was approaching them from. I created a sensor group out of these motion detectors for each set of stairs so I could access them as a single entity in Home Assistant. You can add a single motion sensor to more than one group. In this diagram, you can see that my two levels of stairs only need three motion sensors. This is because the one on the middle floor is part of both the top and bottom sets of stairs. This also has the effect of turning on both the top and bottom stairs when you walk out of a room on the middle level. So you can see your way regardless of if you're going up or down. Both the underbed lights and stairwell lights use really simple Home Assistant automations. The automations are triggered when the motion detector groups detect motion. The Xiaomi motion sensors that I use also have a built-in light level indicator, which I use in this condition to make sure that the only turns on the LED strips when it's below a certain level of brightness. After some experimentation, I found that it works best when I turn the lights on if the ambient lighting was below 50 lux. Whatever that means. The action calls the light.turnon service, which fades the lights in over 2 seconds to 30% brightness. I found that this was the perfect level of brightness when you're walking around the house at night on your way to bed or to the bathroom. The automation then pauses using a wait for trigger until the motion sensor no longer detects any movement. It then fades the lights off again over a 20 second period. This automation has been a game changer in my house. I can now walk up and down the stairs at night while holding things in my hand, not having to look for a light switch on the wall which turns on those brighter than the sun overhead lights. Everyone that's visited or stayed over at my house has commented on how awesome the lights are that automatically come on on the stairs. The fourth of my top five lighting automations are the ones in my living room that automatically set a scene when I either turn on the TV or via my Akara Magic Cube. If the living room lights are already turned on and I go and turn on my television, the lights automatically dim to a more comfortable level for watching TV. If I want to get up and have a snack while I'm watching TV, I simply shake the magic cube and it will pause whatever's going on on the television, raise the lights to 100% brightness so I can see where I'm going. I did a whole video on my smart television integrations and magic cube automations which you can find linked in the description below. The final of my top 5 lighting automations is more fun than practical. And this is my smart fairy lights, which I happen to use in my fireplace. In London, you're not really allowed to burn wood anymore because it's bad for the environment. So I decided to simulate a fireplace using these old bottles and these twinkly smart fairy lights. You can use the twinkly app to set an almost infinite amount of patterns and colors on the lights. I found one that looked like a fire, which I use most of the time, but you can also mix it up depending on the season. These are really great for use in Christmas trees or to jazz up outdoor spaces, and they can be integrated into Home Assistant as well. Unfortunately, you can't yet change the scene or mode of the lights through Home Assistant. You can simply turn them on or off or adjust the brightness. Either way, it makes a great addition to my living room setup. My fireplace lights turn on and off and dim as part of my living room light group, even in the automations I just spoke about. As you can see, there are a lot of smart light automations that you can do with just a handful of sensors, some smart lights, and a little bit of imagination. These automations have revolutionized the way I navigate around my house. And to be honest, these days I barely touch an old school light switch. If you've got some favorite automations in your own smart home setup, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. I regularly release videos about smart devices, home automation, and home assistant. If you'd like to learn more about how I use these to automate my home, click the subscribe button and together we can make your home smarter.